You're back. Good. What can I help you with at this late hour? It's night. Don't you ever sleep? Matter of fact, I don't. Why is that? I have a medical condition of my own. Nothing unusual, though. I'm old, you see. Didn't she have another medical condition? That's good. This way you can answer me some questions. Of course. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. Let's open for now. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it. Such as it is. Without the expression. It's just hairy. Brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally, the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. The room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside, it is cold and windy, but you're inside, and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you? my forward base for the coastal part of your creation. Overhead, you hear the forlorn shriek of seagulls. Far below the birds, a wooden boardwalk filled with abandoned stands, tables and benches, echoes from a long lost time. A middle-aged man stands in a rundown shack on the edge of a fishing village, listening to the heater hum on the wall. Thank you. Strange sensation for a fair assessment of the current situation. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought, but in someone else's voice. Look under the floorboards. water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Is shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt, wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy. A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. Like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The surface underneath the bed feels tender, the air brushing against it, chilly. They feel so smooth, surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. You don't have a face anymore. It's all baby ass now. What? Shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your clean-shaven face. Despite the bulbous nose, unkempt hair, and persistent swelling, you look a little younger, maybe. You almost look like a professional. Your face, such as it is, a regular human face, sans expression. Aye, the sea's gonna calm down soon, I can feel it. The wind is turning southeast. What's on your mind, officer? What do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now I'm tarring a little skiff. What else? 
I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic Insulindian cuisine. Is that enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. This is what is called a conversation. You don't have to be guarded right now. Walk you on the beach. Sounds quite romantic. Oh, very. <laughs> Finding pieces of glass, bits of wood. Every once in a while we get dead bodies. Human, animal, fish, other sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. What else? Bottles, drugs also, lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. Very romantic. All right major choice moment you only get to ask one thing it would be weird to say them all choose wisely mines mines you need mines a mine the rcm could use a mine where is it well the rcm has to wait for another one because some army folks came by took it in the middle of the bay and blew it up the blast was surprisingly timid for such a huge spiky thing. Spiky? Must have been a naval contact mine. You think she really needs more of that after a man died at sea? But what do I do then? What if I told you it is actually possible to go on a date sober? Get out of here with your crazy fringe theories. Before recorded history, men and women were able to do simple, very primitive things to get us sober. Acknowledge the situation and keep it basic. I'm drunk, don't know if you've noticed, so I usually ask people to drink with me. I have, and I don't really. Now, go for it. You just want to go for a walk. What kind of a monster doesn't want to go for a walk? Walks are innocent. Walks are fucking great cardio. Very stable fat burner. Aerobic exercise. This time, though, I thought I'd ask you for a walk. Just a walk? I don't know, officer. I would not have taken you for an innocent perambulator. I am. That's why you should definitely agree. Where would this walk take us, officer? Nothing creepy, strange, or out there. Keep it eerie and simple. Creepy? What is this kink shaming? There's a nice view on the beach I found. Land's End. All right. I will walk with you. But you need to understand that nothing is going to happen. We're just walking. Just a good old-fashioned walk. I like it. Me too. It's been ages since I just had a normal conversation with one of you guys. She means men. Stroll on the beach sounds nice. All right, I guess I'll be seeing you at Land's End in the evening. When it gets dark, all right? She doesn't wait for an answer. You better get ready. Gust picks up her dark hair and lets it fall again, tussled, wild. She brushes a few stray locks from her eyes and only then spots you approaching. Hi, so here you are. It's late and the sun is going down. It'll be dark soon. If we stay here long enough, we will be joined by a cortege of drunks and teenagers. Know that you're not the first guy to bring a girl to Land's End. This is what the locals call a, a make-out spot. <laughs> that is not going to happen here today. I just want to make that clear, Dimples. The thoughts are still elsewhere. 
with distances across the water and with the water itself. Across the rusty water, that's La Delta, the financial district. In the mist-covered distance, towers rise as a rebuke to the poverty of this coast. You seem surprised that I made it. <laughs> Drinking men aren't known for keeping their appointments. It's a rock star thing, tardiness. Aye, you're the starriest of them all. <laughs> Her laughter is throaty and warm. It rhymes with the waves and the cries of the gulls. As she turns to face the sun reflected in the waves and the skyscrapers rising across the bay, you cannot help following her steady gaze. You should say something, anything, maybe the tequila sunset thing. You know, a past incarnation of myself called himself to kill a sunset. I wonder why that is. It's a common Ravisholian expression. It means drinking yourself to death. So, are you going to keep the name? I prefer just going by my initials. It's more conspiratorial that way. Call me HDB. <laughs> Well then, HDB. The remains of the dying sun are reflected in the waves and the skyscrapers rising across the bay. Your mind clears for a moment as your senses take it all in. Not just the glass skyscrapers fragile looking in the shimmering air. River Esperance flowing into the bay. Isn't it strange for this all-powerful thing, the sun, to be so generous towards us? You know, the best time to go out fishing is usually towards sunset, when the water is warmer. The sun also falls on the capeside tenements and war-torn ruins. An old sea fortress juts out, seemingly impervious to the sheen cast over everything else, shaking you out of your reverie. The sun does little for the dead, and those hopelessly lost in their own minds. Or people living in desert climates with sparse vegetation and little drinking water. Is that why you named your boat the Sun? Oh, that was a bit of pride and a bit of superstition. And a bit of conceptual unity too, it being yellow and all. I'm not sure desert people are happy with too much sunlight. Now you're just nitpicking. But I, I concede, maybe desert people sometimes disagree. The salt in the air, and the cries of the gulls and the skewers. Grit of the sand and the green glint of broken bottles. But still your gaze always returns to the dazzling streaks of light. Wherever they may be reflected, their fading opulence. It's bringing us spring, summer. It's entirely on our side, no matter what we do or who we are, for absolutely no reason. Sunlight, no other powerful being, certainly no powerful organization or government. How can that be? There's an explanation to this, and it's political. You see? Aye, aye, it's political. No need to step on a soapbox about it. What if we disagree? See? She doesn't want to disagree. Good sign. Keep it at that. Maybe some general remarks before you say something big. Work your way up to the cool. You have fish hooks in your ears. These? These aren't real fish hooks, silly. They're earrings shaped to look like fish hooks. A drunk called Rosemary brought them to me. I kept them. She's right. They're made mostly of plastic. A cheap novelty gift you can buy from a flower shop or a kiosk. The wind ruffles her hair, silver streaked in the moonlight. There's an interesting lilt in your voice. Thank you. I'm half Ubi. My mother was from Ubi Sunt. Not a lot of sun there, I hear, though I've never been. The wind ruffles her hair, 
silver streaked in the moonlight. Do we wish you were out there fishing right now? I always do. I like it. It's like being on another planet, a water planet, with water worries and water joys. The wind ruffles her hair, silver streaked in the moonlight. So, who do you think killed the hangman? Good one. Um, I'm going to go with the rope. She thinks it was a riddle. She must not even know of that business. Better that way. Here we go. Two different approaches to cap this off with style. Yeah. A massive thermonuclear reaction five billion years old. The sun is God. Hi. And a benevolent one. When did you last have one of those on your side? I still do. I'm righteous. Well, maybe it's that god that makes all those atoms burn up there in that big thing. You know, the wind's going to pick up soon, and I have to go, but... Have this. The sun's good, but it doesn't stick things. I've no use for it anymore. Are you sure you don't need the sword? No. Men around here are too drunk to pose a threat to me. Think we can do this again sometime? Doubt it. But thank you for the company. This is as far as it goes with her. You'd need to put a year between you and your last drink for anything more. Thank you for coming on this walk with me. Farewell. is comforting, if a bit run down. Still, you've earned a rest. The place feels almost like home now, quiet and dignified around you. A new life by the seaside. You're incredibly tired. The darkness and warmth come fast. You're falling asleep. <laughs> it's easier this time. Drifting off, your head has found a comfortable indent in the pillow. Your legs and your torso feel like lead weights sinking to the bottom of the sea. Until they're suddenly light. This respite, you've earned it, brother. Bask in the dark. Let it swallow you up and swivel you around while you forget everything you've managed to remember. Is this the last dream? No, this is the one before that. We'll just keep cycling it for you if you don't mind, as long as we can. Spin it like black yarn. Enjoy it while it lasts. Thank you, darkness. Thank you. You're welcome, Harry boy. You earned it. After centuries of darkness, the alarm rings. But what's this? You actually feel rested. There's no time to cuddle with your pillow, however, or as much as shiver from the cold. The world awaits. Go.
So, I shave. Yes. Uh, um, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps. Uh... I know, I know. Stunning, right? Um, I'm really not sure about this turn of events. I may have preferred the mutton traps. They sort of seem to cover up the. Um... Damage. Yeah, damage. He means damage. Either way, good on you. You are saying? Nothing. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I found that jacket I was looking for, but it's filthy. Could you wash it for me? I can wash it for you, but it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Hell yeah. No, we must run around ceaselessly. It would be torture to stay put. I could use a breather before another rainy day begins. Yeah, I'll wait. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. Merci. I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that field. I hope you take better care of it than its last owner. Goodbye. I'm off. It's always good to see you. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate. To being here with you and what's to come. The Harley boys told us what really happened. I understand. Just like that. No resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. You don't look surprised. They were expecting this. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. No, it's not good. It's the opposite of that. This will let her dictate the terms of your... Shush. I can't hear what she's saying. Let the miss speak. She's tall and thin and tired. A twig trying so hard not to break. If you knew we would find out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. Is she implying the Hardy boys are the law? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm the law. The law. That's me. I know that. But the people around here, they don't see it that way. And if I am to stay here, I need to get along with them. That's not good enough reason. You're right. There's more. More? You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. Briefly glancing over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay and to the horizon. Grey and pale violet in the morning light. What lies beyond it? The pale, the Buindi Isola, the Occident, and then Aranje. The old, old world. The conference centers. The people who are angry at her, her past. What's the air seem involvement with the modern entering got to do with this? You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. Is this about the people you mentioned? The ones who are angry at you? It is. They're after me. And they have friends in the moral intern. Some are moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will. What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill, 
Well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. Fucked. People after her. Moral intern, people. This isn't Oranese lit. Here we go. For once, you seem to have her off guard. Actually, this murder did have a little to do with her. You said you studied Oranese lit. What is it with this fugitive stuff? I did. I also had a side job selling insurance that I was really good at. Got picked up by a bank. Competitive intelligence, they called it. After that, I sort of, uh, transitioned out of the whole culture scene. What did you do to have these people after you? It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol, or even in Orania. What exactly did you do? Industrial espionage. I joined a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. I need the names of the companies involved and who hired you. The job was Lou's doing County Savings Bank. They sound small, but they're part of the Lou Scop conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. But she really destroyed them. She still feels it. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too. Along with Lou Scop and their friends in the MI. Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Lowe's cap. These people engineer financial disasters in second world countries. The conglomerate also includes the Bank of Consecration, Airberg, and the popular Papalolo line of dairy products. Papalolo? Yeah. Papa fucking Lolo wants to kill me. I'm sure there are people who have done much worse than that. Sure. I'm not a war criminal. But it was bad. People lost their jobs. Good people too, not just C-suite. A lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. That can wait. Look into her eyes. There's more. What did you do? I... One of them killed themselves because of me. She says it quickly, like she said it a hundred times to herself to get used to the idea. Out of guilt. That's um, not easy to deal with. How do you deal with anything? It's all just... How do you do it? I'm a cop. What I do is right. By bargaining, then. I do that too. It's not all that effective. Around her, a drop in the atmospheric pressure. Not long from now, it will get dark. The rain will come. And the air will start moving faster, circling the box she stands on. She's already in prison here for what happened. And she's prepared to never leave. Even after his death. What happened here? The night he died. We were there. Together. In bed, I mean. Tell me exactly what happened. Okay. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open, dumb. I could see. I could. A great pain moves through her, a dark and indefinite wave. She continues in spite of it. I knew he was dead. Before he fell down on top of me. You were right. He did enjoy the moment of his death. 
So my feeling was right there. there. He was enjoying the moment of his death. Yes, but how did you know that? You asked her before if he enjoyed it. She avoided it. How did I not discern it was a lie? You know how. He just had a hunch. Detectives have doors sometimes. Another hit. The lieutenant looks at you in acknowledgement. Then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream, then ran downstairs. I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Your cigarette, miss? Oh. That's a motherfucker. Yeah. It was a real motherfucker. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. It's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Titus said you looked pretty high. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Good thinking. Clear your head. You should clear your head. Get into his mindset. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. What did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot. Just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore. So I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Run, woman. Run past them and out into the streets where it's dark and people move. To the lorries at the intersection as far as you can why don't you run away from here as a matter of fact why are you here now i already ran i ran from an entire isola there is i can't run any further not with these people this is as far as it gets well, what happened after you ran downstairs sylvie was tending the bar a lot of people were there the Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Before we continue, who is Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. The leader? Of what? The Hardy Boys. I thought the Hardys was the leader of the Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen, like things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. This Ruby, in her phrasing, is entrusted with great power. She trusts her. So do the others. Would you say she is the eighth Hardy Boy? Why not? Does she also party with Ruby, however? Did you party with Ruby too? No. Still, there is something there. She won't tell you now. Okay, let's go on. What then? Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation. But I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. It's what she does, you know, take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower, to keep him upright. 
to mislead you, they were tampering with the body. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. This is concurrent with your doubts at the autopsy about the coloring being. I knew it. The coloring in his lower limbs looked faint. About half an hour had passed since the moment of death. She nods. You were late. The marks would be faint by that time. In honor of another precise forensic observation. You have it in you to be a champion. Keep your head in the game now. Then what should you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on. His armor, too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. He carried him out. I knew what they were going to do. Make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. Well, what did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while. That we should lay low or something. So I did. This Ruby. Where is this Ruby now? I don't know. I haven't seen her since. We will need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. Interesting. Why did this Ruby go through so much trouble to hide something someone else did? Look into this later. What are you doing? Coming up with a theory. She said Ruby knew something was wrong before she said anything. How come? It was loud downstairs. She couldn't have heard the shot. It is ominous. You already coming up with theories that put the blame on someone other than Classia. When it happened, did you hear a gunshot? When he was shot? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud. This is something to keep in mind when assessing the distance of the shot. Did you kill Lady? What? Why would I put myself through this insanity? Get myself cornered like this? He wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. I know that. But I would never hurt him. Rage? Who knows the dark currents where lovers go? All kinds of crazy things happen when drugs are involved. Sweet, sweet drugs. It could have been a desire murder. Maybe an act of jealousy. He was a serviceman. He must have had a gun. Somewhere, lying around close to her hand. Now, you guys suddenly have theories pouring out when they're obviously just stabs in the dark. Downstairs, people have this crazy idea that you killed him. I'm sad to hear that. They must have said it in some fit of frustration or under pressure. They couldn't have meant it. I've talked to them after it happened. No one has implicated me. She's getting scared now. Of you, the downstairs people, all of it. It's okay if you did it in self-defense. I did not kill him to defend myself from rape. I told you before, that wasn't what happened. True, sire. Tis true. Who among us, having been in love, can say they haven't told about it? What? Fucking themselves over for no reason? This is not what happened, officer. Desires drive people loco. She simply shakes her head. She has the training for it. You've known it since she first greeted you here on this roof. You have the training for it. I can see it in your posture, your shoulders. The work I did, they don't just send you in with no training. Corporate security is a thing. But I'm not a trained sambal fighter. I've never needed it outside the gym. She's fought outside that gym of hers. That much is clear. Moreover, she would like to do it now. Hit you. It's in her shoulders. Do you want to hit me right now? Yes. 
Why? Because I'm under stress. Why? Because life is hell, officer. We'll try to make it less stressful, miss. But these are questions we need to ask. Drugs were an integral part of your relationship. Perhaps they contributed to its end? What does that mean? Do drugs make you aggressive? No. People don't take drugs to kill each other. They take them to feel okay with each other. I thought Ravishal would be more enlightened about this. Especially since you've taken them yourself. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. It's not one of respect. You may want to add a clever retort to this one. Clever retort? She looks at you, confused. The lieutenant shares her confusion. Respond with something professional, now. He must have had a weapon nearby. Did you use that? No. I specifically asked him not to carry firearms when he was with me. He only had his stupid armor. Okay, I'd like you to answer some other questions, miss. Like what? Could the people after you have killed him? That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. And? I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone. So they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. But maybe it did? I just don't know. I don't know anything. We can't go after loose Cap. Not yet. There are other saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. But there's one thing I know, is that you'll get nothing from there. If they want to kill me, they'll kill me. If they want to toy with me, they will. She's come to this conclusion weeks ago. Why did you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. Which is an indicator of truth. Idiot. She's nothing of the sort. So you have his belief, but you're not. You have to understand. The people around here. No one was making the call, and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off, and that little fucker threw stones at him. Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob. Once. Just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud. Thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. Oh God, that was a lie too. Who made the call then? She did, of course. Don't be paranoid, man. It's unbecoming of a police officer. And it makes you sweat. When was the window changed? Last week. Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs, took care of it. You should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. In her bedroom? Inside? Yes. You see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. I think we're done here, for now. She nods, silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um... He's thinking, are we done here? Or should we arrest her? She's a flight risk and she lied to you. She should be taken into custody. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality. This guy won't budge. You have to wake Multiface up forcefully if you want to continue pushing her. Who? What? Dear God, 
You've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She smoke and mirrors and willow wisps. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. Take it easy. Don't overcompensate with this course correction. Ask questions first. Yes, start at the top. Choose at the bottom. It's how we've always done it. No rush. See? Kim, why have we not arrested her yet? There may be grounds here, at least for an extended detention. This bastion of willpower here, his watchmen have been sleeping too. You can be absolutely certain now, but he's coming around. A little whimper. The young woman hears you. She's looking around. Devil woman. What? Her hand trembles. She's only pretending she didn't hear you say, devil woman. You know, I think you didn't make that call to the station. I did. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call 8102 for emergencies. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint. She coughed. That is the emergency's desk number. Anyone could know that, sire, by looking around and calling the desk. I don't believe a single word she says. What time did you make the call? Thursday night. It was late, sometime after 12. It checks out. Anyone could know the number. That someone coughed, it means nothing. But I know the time of the call too. I know I have not been 100% truthful with you officers, but I am now. She sounds like a sixth grader, apologizing. You sense a little hesitation there, or maybe even fear. The stress was on the wrong syllable. Welcome to the Wake Up Club, brother. Your real name isn't Classe Amando. I agree. You wouldn't give us your real name. Not when people are after you. Okay. Tighten it. You've got her. How out of lies now, huh? Okay. Yes. It's not. It's not my name. I knew it. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to common, sir. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name. So I lied. Like I lied before, like I did at LCSB, I have to lie all the time. I'm so tired of it. She's not lying now. She really is very tired. Her metabolism is failing her. The afterglow of whatever narcotics she's been taking is wearing off. Was the passport bullshit too? That passport you keep hidden? No. It's submerged in a plastic boy on the coast, in the reeds. It just doesn't say Clausia Amandu. It says Anouk Meya Smith. Falsified documents? Passport and visa. Given to me by my employer. I can't even use them. My employer probably leaked the name, Meya Smith, to hurt me. Why would they do that? I didn't show up to a rendezvous. They don't take that lightly. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd do something to me. The job was finished. I'm just a liability now. She fears an arrest right here and now. This has been an awful turn of events for her. Where is this boy you? West of the boardwalk, in the reeds, on the coast there. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. I'm not sure I could even find it now. It's useless. The wind rises, so do the hairs on your back. Somewhere west, small bubbles rise from a plastic ball floating in the water. 
Rusty, the color of oversteeped tea. What's happening? Long, spindly arms are spinning the boy around, turning it, inspecting it like a magic eight ball, trying to find a way to snap it open. Nothing is useless. I just the board work in the reeds. I have to check this boy out. The lieutenant makes a note of it. You're welcome to it. It's in the reeds northwest of here, past the Bergen sewage pipe, right near the water line. Tell me your real name. It's Katarzyna Lazie. It's a grad name, Jimsk or Yugo grad in origin. Not occidental at all. Smells of motor oil, tiger, economic desolation, and rock music infused alcoholism. It also makes Clasia almost an allochronym for Katarzyna Alasia. Wait, Clasia is an abbreviation of Katarzyna Alasia. It was a sentimental thing. I want it to be more me here this time. So I used my nickname. A nickname? Who gave you this nickname, Clasia? Who gave it to you? A teenage boy. A million years ago. Hold on. Katarzyna Alasia is not an Oranges name, is it? It's not even Mundi. It's Grad. My parents were Zemsk immigrants, but I'm nationalized Oranese. All I remember is Oranie. Alasia is my father's name. Of course, she doesn't look like an Oranese woman at all. She's... I should have guessed. You don't look Oranese. I've always had that going for me. Oranese women do not win beauty pageants at 14. I'll just call you Miss Orange Disco Dancer. You can call me whatever you want. You're probably not even Miss Orange A37, are you? I am. They can never take my sash and my scepter from me. Yes, they can. For lying. Enough. She nods, her back straight, ready for whatever is next. Ready for the damage. She knows you're grilling her. What if I told you you're under arrest, Miss Sorangier Disco Dancer? But I haven't done anything. Anything illegal. Failure to aid a police investigation. She purposefully misrepresented information crucial to the case. Fucking mind games. Enough. That's right, gang. Stern and merciless now. Stern and merciless as we reel her in. Failure to aid a police officer. You've wasted our time in a time critical investigation. The lieutenant produces a pair of handcuffs. Please, no. But there's nowhere to go. A two-story drop to the plaza mosaic. If she could, she would have run before. Fragile, unshielded. Her voice is thin and tired. I think I know who did it. Who shot Lely. I can tell you. I can help you. She knows something. What do you know? Who shot him? She's silent for a second, as if looking into herself for certainty. Then, in a hushed voice, she says, Gearing up for this betrayal is hard for her. Ruby. Why do you think it was her? She has this thing for me. Ever since I met her and the boys downstairs. She's been pretty frank about what she wants. What she's saying is... Sex. Sex? And more. I made the mistake of confiding in her. I told her I was on the run. She started protecting me. It became an unhealthy relationship. When I started spending time with Lely, she told me to end it. Said there would be shit if I didn't. It was not a good meeting. We stopped talking after that, but... Wait, wait. Everyone, just wait. What is this? Derail this whole thing immediately and investigate. 
I don't understand. Ruby is a woman, right? It's a woman's name. Yes. But you're also a woman. Women like women too, Officer. Try not to fix it on this. Let's move on. Well, I'll be damned. That's one more thing we know about the world. What do you mean, like? I mean, romantically. What exactly in your relationship with Ruby made you think she's romantically interested in you? She said she's in love with me. She even asked me to run away with her when I told her I'm a fugitive. She started developing notions about our relationship. And you led her on? A little. I was flattered, you know? But then I had to let her off, and it was not easy. I came to regret being friendly with her. We may be kissed, nothing more. Yes, but what was their relationship outside this unequal power dynamic? Well, what was your relationship like before this conflict? We spent a lot of time together, listening to the radio and such. She had great milieus. And she was good company. I was sorry it had to end. What was that question about? She's feeding her friend to the wolves here. It also has startlingly little to do with arresting her, you suddenly realize. Sounds like she was fixated on you. This is just an assumption. I know what it sounds like. That's why I didn't want to tell you before. But she knew what had happened when I came downstairs. Somehow, she knew Lely was dead. She wasn't surprised at all. When we came up here, she was calm as a stone, too. She cleaned it all up like she had a plan. This is a familiar theory. You had it, too, remember? Could it be that Ruby was covering up after herself, the lynching? Yet again, you're coming up with this. The worst thing is, it may be true. When Ruby said there would be shit happening if you didn't end your relationship with the deceased, was she threatening you? She came over one night, drunk, said she'd turn my life into a living hell. I've been threatened before, so I can tell when someone knows how to do it. And she's a pro, she must be, to keep the hardies in line. I tried severing ties with her after that. I thought it had worked, but... Some of that fear is still with her. She exhales sharply. What are you talking about? She's afraid you'll arrest her. And how could she have killed him? You said there was a secret route there, right? She could have come up through there, then taken the shot right here, where I stand. It was too dark outside. I wouldn't have seen her. Then slipped back downstairs without anyone noticing. That is possible. Interesting theory. Did she know that door exists? Had you been out there with her? Yes. She's been up here many times. She used to come to drink on the roof when... Uh... The people. What is it? You're thinking about the peephole, right? The perforation in the pinball workshop wall? She would have seen us. My bed is right next to... You mean to suggest she made it? No. No. Why would she do that to herself? No, I, I just remembered you told me about it and... She's not really sure. It was right above the bed. She could have seen all sorts of things from there. Don't let your imagination run wild here, sire. Keep it on track. Okay, that's it for Ruby. Okay, and what? Arrest the liar now. Why? She told us some pretty interesting things there. Don't arrest her. Push her a bit more, but then let her off. That ruby theory was solid. And she's beautiful. She's stuck here. She's already in prison. Look around. She's only trying to help you. 
Hmm? Her. Stop letting her distract you. That sounds good, but I think we should still take you in, just in case. Still? After all this, sir, please. It's a shitty world, and I know I'm shitty too. I know. But I don't deserve to be sent to the moral intern and ground into paste just because I disturb the sanctity of accounting. That's some multinational. She's gearing up for a last stand. This is it. Well, what do you deserve then? I don't know. To spend my days with smoke, and drink and dance, wallowing in shit, just like everyone else. What other options do I have? You have the station calls, right? Where I have to show up at the station or I'll become a fugitive. You can write me one. You don't have to take me in right now. I promise I won't go out anymore at night. I'll be right here. I know you can do that. Just let me come in on my own. In two months, or maybe even one month, that's all I need. You do have the form. That's it. I'm calling it. Kim is beyond compromised. Definitely, sire. What will have changed in two months? Or one month? Everything could change. This city. The extradition rules. The people after me could be in jail. Or maybe Ravishal. There is desperation there, in that silence. A cornered animal looking for a way out. Maybe Ravishal could be free. I could be tried in a free Ravishal. An independent state that doesn't hand its detainees over to the moral intern. A free Ravishal. There is a low, distant rumble on the motor tracks. A great machine shaking the pillars down south. Electricity runs up your spine. I find that hard to believe, miss. What was that feeling? It's coming. Not on my watch. Okay, well. The political gambit has failed. This was her last card. There is nothing more she can say. The final decision is yours. You alone stand on the throne of your mind. I've made my choice. She looks at you in silence, her face filled with fear, lips parted. Wait. If you arrest her, Kim will have to transport her. You'd be without your partner for the rest of the day. Shut up. He's making a decision, and it's his to make. I'll let you off the hook. For now. Don't make me regret it. I won't, sir. Let's change the subject for the time being. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette and steadies her breath. As if in the presence of some tiger. You are. This is not the end of this. A warm column of air rises around you, encircling the building you stand on. You feel its twisting shape, bits of paper and birds on the thermal, along with several million liters of water, all rising up into the great Insulindian sky. Why does it rise? Because it's warm, from the gathering spring, from the oceanic current flowing into the bay, the people on the streets, the machines that hum in the harbor, heavy fuel oils too. <sighs> from the vapor, a great cumulus is formed, a cloud castle 1,000 meters high, a flock of seagulls screams, Hitchhiking on the thermal, they too are part of the procession, the honor watch. For whom? For her, the guest, waiting. Is she safe here? As safe as you keep her. What is she waiting for? For Gloria, 
Soon these clouds will all fall down as rain. Spring will come. Two more months. Maybe less. It's time. Miss, what are you waiting for? You mean here in Martinez? I'm waiting for the miracle to happen. It'll take one to get me out of the mess I'm in. And what would that miracle be? The return, of course. Now, I know I'm not from around here. I would only be hitchhiking. The return is big hit in the industrial espionage circles. A lot of desperate, seedy types there. All screwed in this unipolar world. What is the return? Don't you know, sir? I thought you were from around here. You look like Mr. Ravishall. You know, I'm a bit spotty about a great many things. About being a cop, for example. The return is part urban myth, part political science. It's a fool's hope, sir. And it's also all I've got. They say there will be an event, that it will happen somewhere here. In Ravishal. Ravishal West. They say it will happen soon, and that it will change everything. Le retour. Some political event? How do you know of this? As I said, there's talk. In the competitive intelligence crowd, a lot of people, like me, who need uh, a new color on the map. It's all blue, you see, and that blue doesn't like us. You came all this way because of a rumor? No. I came all this way on a false passport and some money. To hide, mostly. In the most volatile part of the Real Belt, where it's easiest to disappear. Where the walls are still porous and you can slip through. This is just something to get me through the night, you know? A little... Esperance. Still, the story influenced their choice of where to run. It must have some hidden layers. How soon will it happen? Soon. But it's been soon for almost half a century now, so... Don't hold your breath. No need to worry, Lieutenant. I'm sure the streets will not erupt in seditious violence just yet. These streets? I'm not so sure, miss. The return of what exactly? Of the king? Of the nation? Of communism? Return on investment? I don't know exactly. It's meant to be vague, as promises generally are. But at the same time, I mean, things can't go on like this forever. Something will give. It always does. It's an empty vessel. An amphora waiting to be filled. Something always returns from the past. It's how the future happens. Many guesses turn out to have been right. Is this why you said you would like to surrender in a free rev show? Yeah, I guess it is. So she thinks, at least partly, that this return will feature a self-governing Revishaw. She has already placed her bets. Thank you. One last question. Do you really think it will happen? I do. So do I. I agree, Detective. Something is coming. Trouble. It will be a hot spring. I don't know what exactly, but... Something is happening in this city. I can feel it, when I'm out here at night. Her thought trails off. The wind picks up again. Above her, a great cumulus cloud rises, ready to fall down as precipitation. April will come, then May. A month, maybe two from now. You shudder. The feeling dissipates. The thought ends. Let's return to this later.